So, do you believe in mermaids? Why not? I do so envy the imagination of children sometimes, their ability to still believe in things that, as adults, we just simply pass off as ridiculous. Well, such is the theme of tonight's story, another brilliant one from the ever-wonderful Dopamine. Always a great pleasure to read her stories, and I'm sure this one isn't going to disappoint you in the least. Well, my dear friends, it's Monday, the start of another week, and the first of many new stories for you. Well, my dear friends, let's sit back and relax with our favourite drinks, me included this time, and listen. The summer before I started school, my mom was hospitalised for an extraordinarily high-risk pregnancy. My dad was pulling double shifts to keep us afloat, which meant no one had time to take care of me. And so, they shipped me to my aunt's house a thousand miles away. I was excited at first. I was obsessed with the idea of adventure. A real adventure with magical creatures and quests. Maybe this trip would be the catalyst to just such an adventure. By the time we reached my aunt's enormous and breathtakingly beautiful mountain property, I fully believed I was about to embark on my very own fairy tale. The fairy tale dissipated when my father drove away the next morning. I watched his car disappear, trying not to cry and failing miserably. When you're six years old, a day feels like a week. A day with strangers feels twice as long, especially when the strangers aren't kind. Aunt Charlotte didn't particularly care for my mother and, by extension, didn't particularly care for me. Nor did her children. Charles and Alan loved nothing more than scaring me to death with stories of serial killers and child-drowning ghosts. They also made it extraordinarily clear that I ranked far below them in the family hierarchy. So I spent my days roaming the property. Rocky Peak stood sentry in every direction, rising from the landscape like curious giants. Stands of aspens rattled in the wind, Snowy bark shining, and the wild flowers, fragrant, multicolored carpets of blossoms, spreading across meadows and trailing under the trees where they glowed like dim, warm lights. The outdoors soothed my isolation as effectively as a sow. In late June, the zenith of summer, just before the walloping heat of July burns everything to a dry tangle, I found the neighbor's house small and run down, with a garbage-strewn lawn. Through an open window, I saw a woman. She didn't look right. Half-lidded eyes stared blankly at the ceiling, and her mouth hung open. I turned away and continued my hunt. There's something sharp in mountain air, a clean wildness that simultaneously heightens your senses and intoxicates you. I drifted through the forest in a delighted haze, until a voice broke my reverie. A child's voice, happily singing. I perked up. Fairies and nymphs sang in forests. Maybe I'd found my very own magical creature. Maybe this was the start of my adventure. I ran through the trees. Aspens rattled in my wake, breaking apart suddenly to reveal a murky pond. And in the pond, a little girl with a long black head. I froze. So did she. Sun shafted through the trees, drenching her in golden light. Hi, I said nervously. My name's Rochelle. I held up my fingers. I'm six. The girl's eyes shone, large and dark, yet somehow golden, like sunlight glancing off tar. I'm Lorelei, and I'm a mermaid. I stepped closer, feet crunching on twigs and leaves. Oh, I've never met a mermaid. I'm the last one, my mother told me. She swanned across the pond, stopping just short of the edge. Is your mum a mermaid? No, just you. She had five kids, all mermaids. Every last one died 
except me. Shocked tears burn my eyes. All of them. All of them, she intoned. It's not her fault. She didn't know her kids were mermaids, but she finally figured out in time to save me. Do you live in the water? Yes, for ten hours a day. I come in at night since I'm scared of the dark. That's because I'm not all the way mermaid yet. She ducked underwater and erupted with a glittering splash. When I'm all the way mermaid, nothing will scare me. What do you mean, not all the way mermaid? I crept closer. The earth was dangerously soft under my feet, like it might crumble into the water. Lorelei was clearly enjoying herself. Mermaids look like humans unless they spend lots of time in the water. Water washes away the human part, so the mermaid part can come out. I have to be in the water at least ten hours. She held up her own small, wrinkly fingers. Every day or I'll get sick and die. When will you become a full man? Oh, soon. She swam to the other end, once more stopping several inches short of the shore. Mum says changing hurts, and I hurt everywhere. I'm sorry. Lorelei smiled radiantly. <laughs> Don't be. When I'm a mermaid, I'll find a special tunnel at the bottom of the pond. It leads to the ocean. But only mermaids can see it. I can't wait. Have you seen the ocean? Yes, I said. My dad takes me to Caprio Beach. Where's that? California. Her eyes went wide and she clapped her hands. I noticed they were covered in swollen red bumps, like bug bites. You're from California? We spent the rest of the afternoon discussing the California coast. I'll come see you when I'm a mermaid, Lorelei promised. You can't be scared, though. Full mermaids aren't pretty. But we're really nice, if you give us a chance. Oh, I'll give you lots of chances. You're the nicest person I've ever met. Huh? Nicest mermaid, she corrected and laughed. I visited Lorelei every morning and left just before sunset. That's when her mom came to fetch her. I had to leave before then because she'd be furious if I'd discovered Lorelei's secret. Every day I brought chips, sandwiches, and drawings of mermaids. We sang nursery rhymes and lullabies, the Blue Clues theme, and original compositions. Mostly, we talked. We discussed everything. California, the ocean, fairy tales, the forest, her dead siblings, and my forthcoming brother. You need to check if he's a mermaid, she said seriously. If he is, you have to put him in the water so he doesn't die. How can you tell? My mum says you have to listen to your lizard brain, Lorelei answered. It knows. That night I dreamed of drowned babies and long, sinuous lizards crawling out of my eyes to whisper strange secrets in my ear. Lorelei was a welcome break from everything else from my cousins, who constantly tormented me and scared me to death with ghost stories, from my aunt, who ignored me, and from my own fears, which ate me alive unless I was with Lorelei. As June bled into July, and July hobbled into a breathless and suffocating August, I realized Lorelei was the best friend I'd ever had. I told her so one afternoon as I lay belly down on the damp shore. She gave me a tired smile. I figured she must have been close to becoming a full mermaid, because she looked awful. Bone thin, with dark hollows under her eyes and broken teeth. You're the only friend I've ever had. How? You're so nice. She swam over, stopping several inches short of the edge as always. She was so close I could smell her breath which was ghastly. People are scared of mermaids. That's why Mum hides me. But being friends with a mermaid is super lucky. She took my hand. The skin was cold and somehow thin, 
like a fish belly, white and nearly translucent, except for the angry red welts and mosquito bites. I'll make you the luckiest person in the world, I promise. The prospect of mermaid luck made me so giddy I couldn't contain myself. When I got home that night, I regaled everyone with tales of my mermaid friend, Laura. Charlotte exchanged a worried glance with her husband. Then Charles snorted with laughter. <laughs> a mermaid? <laughs> Stupid. Charles? What? He got forward again. She's talking about mermaid. Her imaginary friend is so stupid it lives in stagnant water, Alan added. No, I stood up angrily. Her name is Lorelei, and she's real. I'll show you right now. But nobody wanted to tromp across several woodland acres in the growing dark, because nobody believed in mermaids. Nobody except me. Over the following days, Lorelei's condition deteriorated severely. Mosquito bites peppered her water-wrinkled skin. Strange, puffy welts snaked over her body. Her long black hair became a haven for water bugs and detritus. I feel things in my skin. She extended her rashy, welt-covered arm. Oh, I think I have bugs inside me. She grimaced. When I'm a mermaid, I'll be poisonous to bugs. They'll never bite me again. Looking at her... The skeletal form, the stark, almost inhuman sharpness of her face, made me want to cry. I wish I could help you. You do, she assured me. You'll be here when I turn into a mermaid, and you'll show me how to get to California. She took my hands. Hers were terribly weak and cold. You should go. It's almost sunset. Thick golden light drowned the world in an ethereal haze. But sure enough, shadows were growing, devouring that light before my eyes. Okay. See you tomorrow, Lorelei. See you tomorrow, Rochelle. That gilded sunlight lay over her like a blanket. It erased the sickness and ugliness, leaving a small, dark-haired angel. A real mermaid. As I left, she broke into a song. The melody echoed through the forest for so long it could have been magic. That night, Charles scared me with his favourite ghost story. Alan insisted he'd seen the ghost in question. A real thin woman draped in white, drifting through the trees outside my window. They brought me to tears. Then they told me they were going ghost hunting, and I had to come along. They forced me into the forest. Heavy shadows blanketed the trees, black and blue and deep, ominous purple, thick as curtains. Finally, we stopped in a clearing. Aspens ringed the little meadow, glimmering weirdly like skinny ghosts full of unblinking black eyes. They poured a ring of salt in an uneven circle and chanted. Their voices filled the night, underscored by the light wind and the eerie rattle of the leaves. Weeping lady of the woods, Charles finally bellowed. We summon you now. Silence. And then, a sound. High, miserable and broken. Sobbing. My cousins froze. The weeping continued. A haunting, atonal melody bleeding through the night. Charles ran, and Alan followed. I watched them go, frozen to the spot, until the sobbing broke my paralysis. I tore after them, expecting long, white hands to reach out of the darkness and pull me away. We ran for what felt like hours. When the house finally came into sight, I had a second of relief before I tripped and skidded down the slope. A tree trunk hurtled toward me like a rocket, and then everything went dark. I woke up in a hospital. Minor skull fracture and a concussion, but otherwise okay. I went home three days later. 
And three days after that, I crept out of the house to see Lorelei. On my way to the pond, I entered an aspirin-ringed clearing. My feet crunched weirdly. I looked down and saw a dirty, uneven ring of salt. This was where my cousins had held their stupid seance. Just a few minutes later, I saw the pond glimmering through the trees. Relief and excitement coursed through me. Lorelei! Nothing. The water shone. A field of gold interrupted by mosquitoes and water bugs. Lorelei? I circled the pond, dread building with every step. I called and eventually screamed, but there was no point. Lorelei was gone. She turned into a mermaid, and I'd missed it. Oh, she'd never get to California now. I sat down and wept for hours. Towards sunset, a shrill wail knocked me out of my daze. Fear coiled in my guts as it sounded again. Not a wail, a siren. I followed the sound to that broken down little house. Flashing lights drenched the trees in red and blue. The window, still wide open, blazed with light. Paramedics loaded an inert body onto a stretcher and carried it outside to the ambulance. A police radio crackled. And a cop looked up. Had it not been for the trees, she would have seen me. Maybe they were looking for me. I'd run away, even though I had a skull fracture and was supposed to stay in bed. Maybe they'd arrest me. I tiptoed into the forest and went home. By the time I reached my aunt's house, dark had long since fallen. I felt sick and dizzy. My head throbbed with every step. Everyone was waiting for me. Cousins, aunt and uncle, and, to my horror, a policeman. My aunt stormed over. I thought she was going to hit me. Instead, she gathered me into a hug and held me tight. And this is what they told me. The neighbor was a mentally ill drug addict who overdosed several days before. A welfare check from her landlord led to the discovery of her body. She'd had five children. Three were in foster care. One had died of SIDS. And the last, a girl named Lorelei, was officially missing. A filthy, bedbug-infested bedroom indicated that a child had lived in that house. It was covered in mermaid memorabilia, including several pictures I'd drawn for her. But they couldn't find her. I told them about the pond. Their horrified expressions were at odds with the hysterical relief I felt. It's because she's a mermaid. She turned into a mermaid and swam to California. They searched the pond that night. At the bottom was an algae-slick block of granite. Chained to the block was the corpse of an emaciated little girl with long black hair. It's been twenty years. I can't shake the memory of the seance, of the shrill crying echoing in the darkness. I was stupid enough to believe it was a ghost. But it was just a little girl who was scared of the dark. Well, a bit of a sad one there in the end, wasn't it? Oh, that for me is true horror. The sadness of the human condition. Oh, poor, poor little girl. Well, I'll be back again on Wednesday with a story not quite as sad as this one. And it's another one of my favourite authors. J.D. McGregor will be supplying the story on Wednesday evening. And please, please join me because there will be a free giveaway. That's right. He's going to be giving away his book to you for free. All you'll need to do is write a review on Amazon to get a copy of his book. I know, 
It's unbelievable, isn't it? Yep, well, make sure you join me again. Yes, I know you will. Of course you will. Well, enough for me for one evening. So, bye-bye and sweet dreams. Join me again real soon, okay? Yeah. Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time listening to me. Now, if you enjoyed the Dr. Creepin experience, then come find me on Facebook. Come chat with me on Twitter. Listen to the background music and download it if you like on SoundCloud. Drop by the store, pick up a t-shirt. And, importantly, if you've got a story you'd like me to read, send it to Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up so that I could read your stories. Now, Looking forward to seeing you all again real soon, so come check me out, okay?